And here we go. Ten. Hydrogen yeah, burnoff yeah. igniters yeah. initiate. Seven, six, five, four stage engine start. Three, two, one. Boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis One. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. You know, that stuff never gets old. NASA's Artemis One rocket and unmanned uh, spacecraft Orion successfully lifting off at Cape Canaveral earlier this morning. The historic launch kicks off NASA's mission to send astronauts back to the moon and beyond. Former NASA astronaut and author of Skywalking, Tom Jones, is here to discuss. So, Tom, I mean, what does this launch mean? It feels great. This whole space thing feels great. NASA back in the game. What does it mean for the future of space exploration? Well, we're in a new era now. We've got the International Space Station that we've had going for the last 20 years, Charles. But now we're sending a new craft, brand new crewed spacecraft, the Orion, out to the moon to begin the process of getting Americans and our partners back on the moon. And that's historic. Uh, because we're now going to go back and start to use the resources, the economic resources on the moon itself to help pay for further space exploration. Really exciting to shift gears. You know, speaking of paying for it, I read that the Artemis program itself, $93 billion. It seems like an extraordinary mm -hmm. uh, amount of money. I know uh, a year or so ago when India launched a, a major rocket, uh, I read where it costs more to make a movie about the uh, space exploration than it does to launch a rocket. How do you get $93 billion and how sustainable is that? Well, that's probably spread over about 15 years of development. The, the space launch system rocket that we saw take off last night, it started development in the late 2000s and really didn't get going until about 2012 or so. So it's been a long time in gestation. And that covers a lot of overhead for NASA all, all these years. Now it's finally starting to fly. I think I agree with critics who say that the, the rocket's taken too long to bring to the launch pad. But given the strap budgets that NASA's had over the last 10 years, I think it's reasonable to, to wait until you get this rocket really ready to fly. Now it's flying, and now the question is whether we can make it work reliably enough on an annual basis to start this return to the moon. And we're not doing this in a vacuum, so to speak. We're facing the Chinese competition to get on the moon themselves, and they would love to be there first before we get there. Of course, uh, this, uh, you know, the, the space age was brought in with, through these uh, the Apollo missions, uh, a different sort of excitement then. More recently, though, there's been a similar excitement with SpaceX and others. Does this private competition help uh, NASA? Does it enhance the effort? Is there going to be, are there, will there be joint efforts as well? Because it feels like Elon Musk is doing it more efficiently these days. Right. There, there's a good, the good news here is that the commercial space sector here in the U.S. is the most vibrant on the planet. So nobody else has a thriving a commercial space sector as we have. And, you know, it's a tiered system where mm -hmm. SpaceX is successful at satellite launches and lowering the cost dramatically for that. And they're also NASA partners in, in terms of shipping cargo to the space station and taking our astronauts to and from the space station. But yet, even Elon Musk, with his wealth, doesn't have the capacity and the technical know-how to send a craft all the way to the surface of the moon. He's going to partner with NASA to build the critical lander that we need in the next three years mm -hmm. to get back there. But he can't do it all himself. So I don't see a, a, a case where SpaceX takes over or Blue Origin takes over. It's going to be a partnership between NASA hiring these folks to provide the critical infrastructure needed to succeed in returning to the moon for science right. and for the economic return mining the moon for water. Uh, Tom, before I let you go quickly, when can we expect then uh, astronauts to go to Mars? Mars, about 20 years, if our partners come along with the president and the Congress in funding that long-term effort. And that's going to be the epitome of a private and public sector partnership. That's going to be so exciting. It's all exciting. And I, I appreciate you coming on and talking to us about it. Put my name on the list for the Mars trip. I'm down. Put me down. <laughs> Tom, thank I'll you very much. You. I appreciate it. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.